will prove the correctness of activity selection problem in two parts first one is um, to show that this problem actually satisfies the greedy choice property uh, which just means that uh, the greedy choice that we make at every step is actually a part of some optimal solution and then the second one is to show that this problem has the optimal substructure property which means that the optimal solution of the problem is actually made up of the optimal solutions of the sub problems so uh, let's first satisfy the greedy choice property uh, we'll only uh, check this property for the first greedy choice that we are making uh, we'll show that the first greedy choice is actually a part of some optimal solution so uh, consider this this is the greedy solution of our problem g this is um, the scheduling of the activities now this greedy solution is actually coming from uh, the third greedy st strategy that we discussed in last lecture which was to schedule the classes on the basis of early finish times and let's suppose this is the actual optimal solution of the problem so as of yet we don't know if our greedy solution is actually optimal or not we are going to prove that uh, our greedy solution is actually the optimal solution so this is our greedy solution and this is the actual optimal solution of the problem and these are the activities o1 o2 up to oy uh, then we make another assumption that both solutions are sorted by the finish times we know that our greedy solution is actually sorted by finish times because uh, in our greedy strategy we first sort the arrays in the increasing order of finish times and then we pick the uh, activities that finish early and uh, we are not sure about uh, this optimal solution that if it is sorted by finish time or not but we can do that if we have our optimal solution we do know the uh, starting times and finishing times of the activities and uh, we can actually sort this optimal solution by the finish time even if it um, isn't in the sorted order okay so so now we are going to make another assumption let's say the first activity of the optimal solution which is o1 is not equal to the first activity of the greedy solution which is a1 so let's say a1 is not equal to o1 now we will define an intermediate set i so i is uh, made by removing o1 from the optimal solution but adding a1 to the optimal solution so i is a1 o2 up to on now we need to check two two things about this intermediate set i so first we will check if it is a feasible solution so uh, now you must remember uh, that a feasible solution is a one which follows the constraint the constraint in this problem was the compatibility of the activities so first we will check if i is a feasible solution and then we will see if i is an optimal solution and uh, if the answer to both these questions is correct that means this a1 is a part of some optimal solution so we have proved this greedy choice property that the greedy choice that our algorithm makes is actually a part of the optimal solution okay so i our intermediate set is a1 o2 up to oy so first we need to check if it is a feasible solution or not for i to be a feasible solution it needs to satisfy the compatibility constraint now um, in our greedy solution uh, we had uh, sorted the array of activities um, in increasing order by the earliest finish times so we know uh, from that this a1 has the earliest finish time but we do not know that about o1 now uh, we have replaced o1 by a1 now uh, as o1 was a part of the optimal solution uh, that means that o1 and o2 uh, 
were actually already following the compatibility constraint. That is, O1 only started once O1 had finished. Sorry, O2 only started when O1 had finished. Now we have replaced that O1 by A1. Now the ending time or the finish time of A1 is the least of all. So at maximum it could be uh, less than or equal to O1. So we have replaced the activity O1 by the activity A1 and still the compatibility constraint is being followed. So that means I is a feasible solution. Now we want to check if I is an optimal solution or not. The optimal solution is the one which has the maximum number of uh, activities. We only uh, removed one activity from O and added one activity to O. So I still has the same number of activities. So I is an optimal solution as well. So, so far we have shown that our first greedy choice is actually a part of an optimal solution. And we have shown that even um, if our first greedy choice is not a part of optimal solution, we can add it to our optimal solution just with it here and the optimal solution would still remain optimal. Hence our first greedy choice is an optimal choice. Now we will see the optimal substructure property. We have already proved that uh, the first greedy choice is part of an optimal solution. So we can say that once the first greedy choice is made, the problem is now reduced to finding optimal solution for a subproblem. Now this subproblem doesn't contain the activity that we have already chosen in our first greedy choice. Now this sub problem has fewer number of activities. Okay, so let's define a few terms first. Now let's call uh, our problem of activity sub uh, activity selection as S and let's say O is the optimal solution to our problem S. Then we can uh, define a new set O prime. Now O prime is O minus A1. A1 is the first activity that we chose in our first greedy choice. So O1 is O prime is O minus A1. Now uh, uh, let's also uh, define a new set or, or a sub problem S prime. Now uh, this sub problem S prime contains all the activities from S whose starting times are uh, greater than the finishing time of a1 which we uh, we have already scheduled so uh, now uh, what we need to prove is that o prime is the optimal solution to the sub problems s prime so if we prove this that means uh, this problem has the optimal substructure property and our solution is correct so our claim is o prime is the optimal solution to the sub problem s prime we will uh, prove this by contradiction let's suppose that o prime is not the optimal solution for s prime uh, what is an optimal solution which has the maximum number of activities so if o prime is not an optimal solution of s prime that means there must exist some other optimal solution i for s prime which has more number of activities than O prime. Now uh, this optimal solution I is for sub problem S prime and it has more number of activities than O prime. Now if we add the activity A1 to this A, uh, this solution I, then the number of, uh, to get a complete solution of our problem S, then it will have more number of activities than the optimal solution O of the complete problem S. Now this is a contradiction since we already knew that O is the optimal solution for S that means uh, no more activities can be scheduled for S uh, but this solution A has more number of activities than O. So this is a contradiction. Uh, so our original claim that we uh, used to prove this contradiction that O prime is not 
optimal solution for S prime is incorrect. So we can say that O prime actually is the optimal solution for the subproblem S prime. So this is the summary of proof of correctness. Step one is uh, to show that the first greedy choice is actually made by an optimal solution. And then the second step is to show that the optimal solution to the problem contains within it the optimal solution for the subproblems. Now, this step two actually uh, guarantees that we have an independent subproblem to solve uh, once we have made our first pretty choice. And uh, the optimal solution of this independent subproblem can be com combined with the first pretty choice to make uh, optimal solution of the original problem. Now uh, we can also use induction and uh, keep repeating this step one for subsequent problems until there are no activities left in the optimal solution. Previously we did this only for the first activity but we can keep on doing uh, this for the next activities as well.